Hi, this is John with Off-Grid Homesteading. And for all you other off-grid uh, homesteaders or just homesteaders living out in rural America, trying to figure out how to get a decent, um, you know, no cap or no throttled back data plan that you can use for getting to the internet and things like that, watch this video. This is the internet uh, interface to my uh, router here at the house. And you can see it's the AT&T. Um, it should say about your home base. But here's the coolest number at all data use. So I didn't reset it this month. Um, so in the last 30 days, today is uh, June the 30th, we used 421, 425.1 uh, gigabytes, uh, gigabits of uh, gigabytes of information. Um, here's some phone calls and stuff that have come in. But uh, when you're off grid like us and you are reliant on your internet uh, to number one, be fast enough and two, to be able to do work, because uh, I um, uh, I do photography, 360 photography and stuff with Google, and um, I'm kind of like a virtual tour photographer, so I actually have to upload, uh, you know, gigabytes of data on a monthly basis just to um, upload clients' photos, things like that, keep up with their websites, and and upload pictures into Google Maps and things like that. So I need to have the ability to have good upload and download speeds. So even though I showed you in another video. Um, that I was getting about uh, 9, 8 to 10 megs uh, down and about 4 to 7 megs up in that range because, you know, if you look out there, because we're in a very remote area, um, it's based on the traffic that's coming in through the cellular network. So, um, you know, even if you looked at uh, all the population uh, in this area, you know, um, population and and you know, a city that's, you know, out in the mountains near a lake, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, a couple hundred people. When you're out in a major city, you know, 100,000 people or more, and you're sharing that bandwidth on a network uh, tower, and then um, you have lots and lots of towers in, in an area to kind of deal with that, um, the saturation of the bandwidth. So out here, 10 megs down, you know, um, you know, five to eight megs up, is actually pretty good, pretty good because it's not shared with as many people. So I just want to share um, the AT&T box and show you what that looks like again. So this is the AT&T home base that uh, we're using here. Um, you've got you know your standard uh, uh, power switch on off and stuff right there. Um, your AC adapter and stuff coming in. You've got one wired Ethernet output there, and then you've got uh, two phone jacks. That phone jack. Um, actually runs all the way down around behind there up and over and then down to our wired phone you can have a um, direct dial tone from this box right out of it and it works great so here's the neat thing if I you see the five bars right there if I turn my cellular booster off by unplugging unplugging the power adapter, my internal antennas can't work. And what happens is I'll either go to red, which means no signal. Yellow is, you know, a little bit of a signal. And green is, is real good. So let's go back down here, plug in the booster. Let's see what happens. There booster lights and stuff will turn on there's your internal antenna that rebroadcast it so that internal antenna right there is rebroadcasting the cellular signal from outside and letting this box get pretty good uh, internet activity. and I showed you before in the other video um, how that works where I've got a wire that, that thick wire uh, the white one's actually coming down here from the trailer directly into my pole here. Uh, my pole's about I think 10 or 12 feet tall. And it goes directly into a Yagi antenna. That was the biggest difference when I used a flat antenna that came in the box for that Wee Boost thing. It just uh, didn't give me the kind of signal. It was picking up more from the inside than was outside. So the goal is this antenna right here you want to have as far apart compared to the antenna inside the trailer 
um, than this. And I have 100 feet of wire. I could, if the trailer was a little bit further out, you know, we could actually get a little bit better bandwidth. But and you can see that this uh, antenna is about 30 feet or so away. Um, my cell cell phone that sits, you know, right back here will actually transmit and is received by this it sends a signal back into the antenna in the back and it causes a loop that uh, actually causes a lowering of the output of the antenna so you can see i'm inside now um, right by my uh, my desktop machine and here's my uh, exterior antenna out there so what i had done originally i was watching you know i had my wee boost uh, sitting on the side of this cabinet here I had my internal antenna over here and uh, what was happening is the um, it was getting a it was um, repeating. So I, let's say I have my cell phone sitting here. My cell phone was transmitting. Um, it was being picked up by the antenna out there. Whoops! It was being picked up by the antenna out there. Uh, then it was being amplified with the WeBoost antenna in here, and it was basically creating a feedback loop. But that feedback loop was causing the speed to drop. So I tried various um, locations of the antenna and everything. So uh, two things I had to do. Number one is the um, I wanted my Wi-Fi box in the central area between my uh, desktop machine over there, our you know seating area back here, and where Kelly sits there. We we don't really use the internet in the back of the uh, oops back there in the back of the trailer and stuff, just because we don't want our um, I don't want uh, Wi-Fi and all that stuff, you know, broadcast it at full strength right by where we're going to be sleeping. So by by mounting the WeBoost um, as far over as I could, mounting the antenna up, uh, my internal antenna up high, having my Wi-Fi in the middle, so the Wi-Fi serves about the, you know, uh, it's two-thirds of the way. No, actually, this is probably right in the middle of the trailer. So Wi-Fi is serving basically the whole trailer uh, pretty well. Um, the Wii Boost is that that internal antenna right there is as far away from the external antenna out there as I could possibly get without taking the internal antenna and putting it into the bedroom because I like I said I want to minimize you know RF exposure and stuff uh, that close to us while we're in bed and sleeping and all that kind of stuff. It's a whole different story. But anyway, um, that is what is. Um, giving us you know pretty good speeds here now it's kind of weird um we're uh, it's july 3rd today uh july 3rd so what i've noticed is on this uh bandwidth prioritization thing they say you know they don't throttle you down or anything like that but what ends up happening is when you have a ton of people and stuff that are coming in visiting the lake doing that kind of stuff um the cellular network happen to be on Verizon or let's say AT&T for example which is where the internet is um, when there's lots of people that are on the cellular network within the range of that tower because there's not very many towers that serve uh, this area so what ends up happening is um, the bandwidth will slow down so uh, like uh, this morning I was getting at the most about um, three megs three megabits down and it's interesting, I get better upload speeds. I get about three and a half to four megabits up with the latency of about 230 milliseconds. So what that means is just slow response time. You can still get to you know WordPress and build websites and do things like that and get to YouTube, but you're not streaming at, at, at high def. You're not streaming at, uh, you know, you, you might be streaming at 144p or 240p or something like that. Um, and you're not getting anywhere near any you know, like a standard TV resolution of 480p or, or high def at 720. So that's one of the drawbacks of you know having a, a internet connection on wireless, uh, like you know cellular wireless. But the the options out here are zero because um, we have a telephone pole on our, our property um, way out over here. And uh, we did actually call them to see if they can have hardwired internet put in and they just said it's too far can't reach us so this is the only option we have but here the, the let me show you my um, uh, my data usage as of today this I'm making this video a couple days after the first couple of pieces of this let me show you what we're okay, at so logging into my router and you can see right here now like I said I hadn't reset my device <clears throat> in the last couple of months uh, and resetting it means literally resetting the whole device 
resetting up your Wi-Fi network, the whole nine yards. There's no simple button that says, you know, reset my data usage. But, you know, 442 gigs. Now, I know, like, on... Okay, so I just did a comparison sheet for the rural plans, rural hotspot plans available through the AT&T home base, and I did a, a cost comparison against the AT&T <clears throat> hotspot-only plans that go up to about 50 gigs, and then they charge $15 per gigabyte above that, so I extrapolated out for the 6080 and 100. So anyway, hope this helps you. If you have any questions, um, the, the plans, the AT&T home base plans are only available in rural areas, meaning areas that AT&T landline service is not available uh, in the United States, and it is currently um, available right now in Missouri and Kansas only through the corporate stores. So I hope this video helped you, and you can take advantage of the special plans that uh, AT&T is offering. Um, the Missouri and Kansas markets might be just a test market here. They might be trying it in other markets, too. So call AT&T, find out uh, where they are, and uh, hopefully you can benefit like we are, too. Have a great day.